Hello, so this week I want to introduce you or demonstrate to you a technique which I hope will be really useful to you as part of the process of turning your sketches, your studies of animals, the zoo animals, the farm animals, uh, into uh, compositions. Now the technique is monoprinting and if I zoom in here you can just see a couple of monoprints or monotypes as they're also known that I've made using two different approaches. I did something with my goats here um, uh, using a technique that's a bit like almost using carbon paper and then another technique wiping away a little, little bit like charcoal rub away um, wiping away the ink to leave um, some of the printed shapes. Now the point is this technique is great for quite quickly generating images and there's a certain amount of accident, random quality to the images because it's printmaking, things come out in reverse and you don't always know exactly how they're going to turn out and that can be a great help in the whole process of trying to generate some new ideas about how to put your sketches to work. So this is the stage um, working with the ink and then I'll demonstrate afterwards how you can apply pastel, charcoal, other materials on top of the ink to refine your, your, your prints, but also to take them to you know, a, a new stage of working with colour um, and other things. So here is my sort of kitchen home printing set up and let me talk you through the materials and how to work with them. So I've mentioned about block printing ink, that's what this is and I have here, thanks to Jill, a piece of Perspex. Perspex is great as you'll see when I demonstrate it because when you've put your ink on and you've done something with the image you can actually hold it up against the light so you can see what your image is. But if you don't have any Perspex, you need some sort of a smooth surface. So for example, these Formica palettes that we work with in the studio, they would um, be suitable as well. I'm going to work on the Perspex, but let's you, you let me know um, what you have and what you don't have and what you might need. So uh, the block printing ink, I've, I've actually got one of these useful painting trays, which is good for spreading ink out. So I've just put a, a kind of line of ink there and I have a roller. So it is necessary to have a roller. This is a printmaker's roller. And I take a little bit of the ink and spread it out on the tray. You can see there that this, this is different from drawing ink. It's block printing ink and it's much more viscous. It's much thicker than drawing ink and it stays wet longer. The point of this tray onto which I've spread out the ink is that it allows me to get a fairly even coating of ink onto my roller. And I'm then going to apply this to my Perspex sheet. So I keep going back to get more. I don't want, I use the um, tray and the roller to get this even coating, which means I can get something reasonably even spread out on my perspex sheet. So the perspex sheet is the plate and I'm going to be working on that in different ways. So I think that might be enough for this first approach. So I mentioned this already that this first approach involves almost the same technique as a piece of carbon paper. We've got the wet ink there. I've got a sheet of newsprint. It's quite small you can see from the size of my hand. Newsprint is good because it's so thin and so sensitive. It picks up everything that is there uh, in the ink and everything that you do on its surface. Um, an alternative to newsprint might be photocopy paper, the sort of thing you put in your printer. Again, that's nice and thin. Um, so let's try that. So I just lay it on there. I'm, I'm not going to press it or touch it or anything because like carbon paper, anything I do will be picked up, any, any pressure on the paper will pick up, be picked up by the ink. 
So let's work through my drawings. What about my giraffes? So uh, I'll do a little bit of drawing. So using my giraffe sketch. I've just got a pencil. I'm going to do a line drawing. So as I've said, the whole idea here is that you generate lots of images and you don't, I don't think you should even be judging whether they're successful or not. The first point really is to produce some images which are maybe uh, a little bit, not quite random, but a bit, a bit of a spontaneous response to your sketches. And from those prints, you may well find that you can actually produce painted compositions because there will be ideas generated by this process. So I've done some lines. Let me just show you how that looks without doing anything extra. You can see that you get lovely, um, lively lines. It's like a sort of charcoal pencil or something. And I've also picked up some of the other ink in between. So you often get very atmospheric images from this process, but I want to do a little bit more. I want to do a few details. The, ch the giraffe might have an eye. They've got that very distinct pattern, haven't they? So again, I'm just being fairly loose about this. But I'm applying a pattern to their necks and Drawing in a few more things. I could try other ways, you know, I can use my fingernail perhaps to add something there. Maybe I should give them some, I don't know, tall grasses, just using my fingernail there. So there's a whole range of marks that I can experiment with making. And then that's my image. So as I've said, I'll show you um, later in the video how you can, once this is dry, because the printing ink stays wet for a while, but once this is dry, I can apply pastel, charcoal. It would be quite nice here to get some colour into those animals and maybe use a different colour in the background. But there's already something suggested, I find, by the texture. You get instant texture and effectively instant atmosphere, I think, using these monoprinting techniques. So I'll pause while I set up for, to show you the other approach. So I've prepared the plate again uh, with the ink, which had been uh, spread out on the roller, evenly coated on the roller. I've covered the plate and if I do a little bit of clever camera work here, I can show you how if I hold this up to the light, you can see at the moment it's you know, it's a dark, a dark shape. There's a little bit of light showing through in certain places, but this is why it's handy to have the perspex because as I begin to draw, I can actually check how it's, how it's looking by holding it up to the light. So this time um, I'll maybe work with some of my pigs from the farm. And the difference in this technique is it's much more to do with uh, shapes. It's a little bit, as I said, like working with um, charcoal rub away drawing. So I'll do a couple of pigs, I think. One of them I might outline, maybe the one at the bottom. I'm going to put the one at the bottom. Uh, I'll do a bit of an outline. So I'm just using a pencil again. But I think the other one I'm going to work with the negative shape and try and wipe away around it so that I can try and demonstrate a couple of possibilities to you. Well, let's just show, let's show you that first. Yeah, you can see that, the light shining through where I've drawn some lines. But for my other pig, I'm going to stretch a rag over my finger and I'm going to try and wipe away. So in order to leave behind a black pig, 
I want to wipe away some of that ink. And this can be a gradual process. I'll go round it and hold it up for you to see again. Because what you gradually learn as you do this, if you do a few of these, is just what the effect of how much you wipe away is. You don't need to wipe away to an absolutely clean background. You can see something is beginning to emerge there. But I'll, I'll carry on. To a certain extent, I've probably just moved the ink around a little bit. So I'll have to keep refreshing the bit of rag if I want to really lift it off. But I wanted you to see that because in my drawing of the pig, I've got a, a black pig with a grey background, but I've also got lots of greys within the animal. So it's not just a case of producing a silhouette. It's hopefully a case of modelling something of that dark beast according to how much I lift off. And I'll also do a little bit of work in the background. I've got my other pig that I outlined, so it's probably easier for me to see where to take things off. But I'm trying to work the ink in different ways so that I'll create some textures, which when I print will have some relevance to my animals. So that's coming a bit. I think it's going to be a bit more interesting when I print it. But you can see that I've worked. It's quite good to have wiped away here and left a few of these white lines, but not not entirely. So I'm going to do a little bit more now just to the bodies of these two and then I'll print it because I know you can't wait to see. So I want to make that body a little bit greyer in places. So you've really just got to experiment a bit and I said at the beginning you know with the first technique I think the great thing about this way of working is that you can very quickly generate images. And they're images that won't be perfect, but will allow you to work on top of them a bit to create or to refine them. And in the process, you generate some new ideas about how to take your sketches, which you think, what am I going to do with these animal sketches? How you can take them to the stage of um, studies for compositions. So let me print that. Uh, actually, before I print it, I just wanted to show you one more thing. These evil wipes, which we shouldn't really be using, are actually great for uh, manipulating some of this ink because they're, they're wet, obviously, and um, provided you don't get the ink too wet, you can actually move it around a little bit more. And uh, because I've got the Perspex, you know, I can hold it up against the light. And I just wanted to get a little bit more definition in certain places. I was thinking about the position of their legs and so on. So that's one extra thing you might do. Uh, and you might also even introduce, you know, lines, white lines, of the sort that I was doing. So you can go a little bit further with uh, refining um, before the stage of printing. So for printing again, I've got a sheet of newsprint because it's particularly sensitive for picking everything up. I lay it down. This time I will press it because I want it to stick to the ink. And you might have another roller or just a bit of rag is fine. Provided it doesn't move, but the ink is sticky, so it should stay once you've pressed it down. And then I'm just using the rag in the way that you might use a roller or a printing press to get as much of an impression as possible. 
and it's always handy when you're doing printing to lift up a corner see if um, you've got what you were hoping for so I just want you to see it all that looks pretty dark to me but if it wasn't as dark as I was hoping then I put it back and I press a bit more but let's do one more thing so I'll look at that print in a second uh, but while it's still wet, well, there's the print. Not too bad, actually. I'm not pleased. Uh, while it's still wet, I'll just take, show you how you could take one more. Well, potentially, you could take many more, but if it's called a monoprint because the first, well, you only really get one. Whoops, you only get one decent one. But if we're in the business of generating images which we want to experiment with, the composition. Sometimes it's worth taking a second print, which will be much fainter because there's not a lot of ink left. Oh well, yeah, no, I see it's not, not too bad actually. And then let's try one more clever trick which is to take what is called a counter print. I need a, an area to do this on. Because of course, this being a print, it's come out the other way around, hasn't it? It's been reversed by the process. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, you can also, if you've got a problem with that, or if you just want to go on experimenting with all of the possibilities, you can take a counterprint. So I've taken a print of the print while it's still wet, which again will be pretty faint, but it'll put things the right way around again. So here are these three different images that came from that wipe away technique, the monotype process, uh, the, the approach favoured by Degas. And what I'll do um, with the email is I'll send you a couple of pages from the book that I did on Degas because there are some, I think, quite good demonstration of how you can apply pastel and charcoal to these images to develop them. But I'll go and put them on a heater to dry them, and then I'll show you a little bit of that now. So I've had them drying on the heater. It doesn't take too long, depends how thick the ink is. And this is on newsprint, so it's more absorbent. You could be um, using cartridge paper, thicker paper, and then it might take a little bit longer. Uh, but now I'm going to work on, I'm delighted, that's 10 minutes work. Look at all these different images. So now I want to just show you briefly um, how you can work on top of these. And I'm going to use pastel. And I suppose I'm going to be stressing that you want, you want a lot of what's there to show through. So, you know, don't be too keen to kind of tidy up too much. I mean, I can add colour. Actually, that ink's a little bit wet. Never mind, it's still going to work. I can draw on top of what's there. You know, I'm going to want to warm up some of those black lines. But as I say, I wouldn't be too concerned about perfecting what's there. Try and think much more in terms of how can this be the inspiration for some kind of composition in paint or and in, in which case it's much more about generating different arrangements maybe seeing how the color works but i think if i can get yeah this is a li little bit wet still so anyway so trying out some colors and i think i'd also suggested to people in the past as well you can take a similar approach with um, photocopy and photocopying and uh, printing, printing your drawings off the, the computer. So if you do some monoprints, 
and you like them. But what would like to try a variety, say of colour schemes or and actually you could print them off on um, on your printer and then put the colour, put the pastel on top of the um, of the, the printed image. So I'm getting confused getting you confused here. I'm talking about printing off your photo off your computer, but making a print of a photograph of your monoprint doesn't help anyway. So uh, there's that one. That was my kind of um, carbon paper type image. So I'm getting a bit of color in there, thinking about not just the animals, but what am I gonna set them against? And as I've said, I feel the great thing with monoprinting is you get this kind of instant texture. So all this stuff here was purely because the paper stuck to the ink. And then I put a few grasses in, but um, you know, the work was done for me by the process. So these, these aren't just isolated um, images of, you know, isolated giraffe drawings. They're actually in some kind of setting. And if I can think of how I want to develop that setting, then that would be part of the process of, of refining that particular image. So that's one. Another one, when we, uh, zebras. And I realise now, actually, maybe that this ink is still a bit... Oh, no, maybe it is OK. Uh, but I, what I was less happy with with my zebras, I mean, I think it would be fairly straightforward, you know, to introduce some sort of green or contrasting colour to the background. But I'm quite keen on... And, you know, I'm happy with the, pat the pattern. They're very much stripey zebras but it would be nice if they were better drawn and there are things that I've lost you know I think I've lost their ears so I'm now working with some willow charcoal and that's pretty good because it it almost looks a bit like the ink so without being too fussy about these being perfect representations it is possible to introduce some charcoal marks, willow charcoal marks, that almost um, are, are sympathetic with the um, the ink effect. And if we can do charcoal, perhaps we can do chalk. Yeah, it's not quite dry enough for the chalk. Where 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 the ink's a bit thinner, you know, where I've wiped away. I can introduce some quite satisfying white lines but where the ink is still a bit wet. So I think to be sure for it to be dry, you, you know, you might need to wait a couple of hours because that's, you know, it contains something which keeps it wet because that's what you need for this process of, of developing your images. So there we are. I would like to do more to really get this, these uh, zebras to be the best zebras they could be. And I think it might help actually if the green was a bit stronger. But that's a little bit of an introduction. I said I'll, I'll add some pages from the Degas book, which goes into a little bit more detail or gives some slightly better examples of how to develop monotypes into images and this is something that Degas did you know to a fantastic level um, and I think the main point that's in there is the idea that you want the monotype the monoprint to show through whatever you do so don't completely obliterate what's there and if you do apply something like pastel, do hatching or make small marks, discrete marks that allow one to see through to the ink image underneath. 
and then you have you know you have the best of both worlds you also have layering so actually i think i'm fairly pleased with how those have gone i've taken some sketches done from life these two both at the zoo and i'm now beginning to generate some compositions and i think they have a certain atmosphere a certain mood which comes from that highly textured mono printing quality so look forward to seeing what you do um you'll get the image uh, you'll get the video rather um and you have your sketches so may, let's let's just see how you get on on monday you may not have done very much and we can hopefully exchange tips and advice on what works better um, and, and we can learn from each other in that way. All right, see you tomorrow.